A new poll on perhaps the most important issue facing American families could spell trouble for President Biden's re-election campaign. It finds 83 percent of voters say the economy is only in fair or poor shape. That negative number is five points higher from a similar poll just last month. Let's bring in Forbes Media Chairman and Editor-in-Chief Steve Forbes. Good to be with you, sir. Good, good morning. Good to be here. This is just not good for a president running for re-election. No, and I think what's happening with the economy, even though it's not officially in a recession, it's sort of the economic equivalent of walking pneumonia. Not enough to put you in bed yet, but just dragging you down, draining the energy. I think there's a economy fatigue, uh, one thing after another. So, yeah, inflation has come down a little bit. Prices are still going up. Wages aren't going up fast enough. There's a feeling the country is adrift. There's whole negotiations on the debt ceiling. My goodness. Why they, they can't control spending, even though it's $2 trillion higher than it was a couple of years ago? People just throw up their hands and say, these people are out of control. There are a lot of numbers in here that really, um, you got to do a double take with the president and the White House thinking about a re-election campaign. Here's one of them. 48% say Biden's policies are hurting them. 48%? And uh, only 20% believe they're getting help from the administration? That's not good. No, and I think uh, that's why next year Joe Biden will not be the Democratic Party nominee. Whoa. You're on record. On record. Because the economy, yeah, they can sweep the Hunter stuff away, but that, that, that has a stench out there. So you have a poor economy, you have a president people feel is not up to the job anymore, certainly not for the next four years. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the scenario is going to be, but they cannot have him running in November of 2000. Okay, well, you, this is what Jackie does for a living. She covers the White House and the president. What do you think of that? Well, I just wonder, who do you think it could be, if not Joe Biden? Uh, I think uh, you could see sort of a replay, at least in spirit of 2020, when they're fearing Bernie would take over. They didn't mind his policies taking over. They didn't want Bernie to take over the Democratic Party. And so they engineered Joe Biden's nomination. I think Governor Newsom of California has illusions of that. I think uh, the governor of Michigan and some others are thinking some scenario may come along. They have the problem what they do with Vice President Kamala Harris. Maybe there'll be a Supreme Court seat opening. Who knows what the scenario is? But they know they cannot go with this guy in this kind of condition. Okay. Especially after the debates in the Republican Party show that this is a party developing ideas, mm -hmm. a lot of new faces, and so people want something new. That, that viewpoint is in the minority right now. Maybe you're, you prove right over time. We'll see whether or not. And, it, and if so, we'll replay this video, okay? Uh, of, of this and if day. it's wrong, you'll, you'll in, replay it anyway. Yep. Late May. <laughs> uh, so Jackie is knee deep in these debt ceiling negotiations. And you mentioned Bernie Sanders. He was on CNN last night. Watch here. Well, I think if the Republicans are prepared to hold the entire world economy hostage, and say, hey, Mr. President, you got no alternative but to make massive cuts in programs for vulnerable people. You have no alternative. Well, the president does have an alternative. As you've indicated, the 14th Amendment is pretty clear. So Democrats are largely melting down about this bill that they will likely need to support, have not negotiated, and don't really know what's in it right now. Um, but where, what do you think about that mixed with the polling we had earlier this week that showed that 57 percent of Americans oppose raising the debt limit without spending cuts? And that's the position right now of a lot of Democrats trying to protect all the spending that's happened. Well, I think a lot of Democrats, even though they won't say it publicly, realize they cannot go in an election with the kind of conditions they have today. So they know they're going to have to come up with something. And Joe Biden can say all he wants about the Republicans being at fault. He's captain of the ship. The ship is headed for an iceberg. He can't blame it on the passengers and the crew. Ultimately, it falls on him. That's why I think they started to even sit down with Republicans, which they vowed they would never do. So I think they will come to a deal. I think they'll pass Congress, but it'll be with bipartisan support and bipartisan opposition. I think you're going to find a block of Republicans will say no, a block of Democrats will say no, but they will pass something. My only real disappointment in it is they're going to put it off till after the election of 2024. I'd have liked one more bite at the apple to try to get some oh, spending uh, restraints, uh, but that's not going to happen. Okay, so on the debt And side, the other thing is, yeah. get rid of those IRS agents. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you may have some luck on that. Yeah. New York Post headline on debt ceiling is not Biden versus the GOP, uh, but Biden versus the voters. That's the point you're making, and you retweeted that. Good stuff. And, uh, and then the fact of the matter, the fact of the matter is, ultimately, public opinion prevails. And the White House can spin it all they want. They've got to come up with a deal, and they will. Do you see okay. us getting downgraded real quick before we... 
uh, even if they do, the markets make their own decisions. Uh, they ignore the rating agencies and stuff like this. It's, I, I'll be blunt. I think it's more about publicity. has no impact on the market. They do these things second by second each and every day. Love it. Steve Forbes. All right. Came to, he came to play. He did. <laughs> Thank you. June Thank 1 you. is next Thursday. That's the deadline. We'll see if we meet it. Thank you, sir. Have a Thank great you. Weekend. You too. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.